Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Your fellow sin sick sinners being treated by the great physician of souls. Are you someone who likes to hide the fact or deny the fact that you're sick? I know when I have a cold, I like pretending like I'm not feeling the effects of a cold or a flu. I don't want to acknowledge that my throat hurts. I don't want to admit that my nose is running. I don't want to think about feeling tired, exhausted, and contagious. I like to pretend that it's because I was out in the cold a little too long, especially this last week. If you were out there, it's just because I was in those sub-zero temperatures for too long. It's not really a cold. I'm just, I'm just reacting. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I don't need to go to the doctor. I don't need medicine. I'm fine. Now, some may think that's the power of positive thinking, and that's a good way to treat sickness because you'll get over it quicker. If you just deny it's happening, you can keep going on with your life, and pretty soon, if you did have a cold, it won't matter because you didn't acknowledge it, and it'll be over before you know it. And that may be fine if it is just a cold. But what's the danger if those cold symptoms are something much worse? If they're the sign of a deeper problem like bronchitis for a child, if it's croup or pneumonia, well, then avoiding those things and not acknowledging the things that are happening is extremely dangerous, right? Because in a short amount of time, that sickness could bring you to the brink of death's door. There's much more serious things than a cold, obviously. And the reality is, is that all of us like to hide certain sicknesses, I mean, obviously, if your symptoms are leading to something like pneumonia, bronchitis, or even worse, if it's, if it's a sign of cancer, the earlier you acknowledge that, the better, because you hide from that, what's going to happen? Does the problem go away? No, it gets worse and worse and worse. All humanity has the problem, the sinful nature problem, of hiding our sickness. All humanity has a terrible sickness, yes, of sin, but I would say there's a sickness that's even worse, the sickness of arrogance. Because that arrogance leads you to not only know that you are a sinner, but to deny that you need any help to really accept the fact that you are a sin-sick soul that is dying, not just in this life, but forever. And so not only are the actions dangerous for you as you continue in sinful behavior that pulls you away from God and tears you from his grasp and tells you that you're just fine and, and leads you down paths that cause consequences that'll last for your entire life, but you don't even admit that you have a problem, that you need help, that you need a doctor, that you need a physician to perform painful surgery on you so that you may be healed. In our text, there's kind of this just very obvious example of arrogant people. We don't know hearts like Jesus does. So when he says things the way he does, even after it says they're amazed by his words, this is great, and then he responds by saying a physician is always rejected in his hometown, or a prophet's always rejected in his hometown. And you think, that's kind of harsh for Jesus to say. But he knows their hearts. He knows that outwardly they can say, wow, this guy really is well-spoken, but isn't he Joseph's son? I mean, this doesn't make sense. He knows that in their heart, they haven't allowed him, even the time of day, to think about him as being someone that they need. He knows that, and so he brings up two of their favorite prophets as Israelites, Elijah and Elisha. And he says, no prophet is welcome in his hometown. Let me give you some examples of this. Elijah 
didn't go to any of the widows in Israel. Not a single one during that time of famine for three and a half years. Do you think this widow in Zarephath was the only one who was in need? He only went to the widow outside of God's country. And he went to her because she very clearly knew that she was alone and she needed help and she needed desperate help from a miraculous God. She, she knew that she needed that. And the same thing he says with Naaman, who was this leader from Syria who had leprosy and had heard about through a servant girl from Israel about this great prophet Elisha and that if he wanted help, he should go to the God of Israel because that God was real. And he did. And he was healed. And those are beautiful things and and he's showing God can do miraculous things but he brings up those accounts to point out something painful that the people of Nazareth do not want to think about. I'm telling you this because you are rejecting your God. You're going to say, physician, heal yourself. But there's a reason Elijah and Elisha didn't heal anybody in Israel at that time. Because the people of Israel were arrogant. They were so proud of themselves. They thought they didn't need anything from God. They thought God may be a band-aid, but he's not the one who actually needs to get us through life and bring us to eternity. We are God's people. We are awesome. We are not sick. We just may need, you know, someone to help us out every once in a while, but we're not deadly sick. So Jesus' point is God couldn't, not because he doesn't have the power, but he wouldn't do miraculous signs there because they wouldn't have listened. They wouldn't have turned to God, even if he would have done a thousand miracles, because their hearts were hard and they didn't think they needed God's healing power. There's a reason they got filled with rage when he finished. Because they understood that what Jesus was saying is that you and your ancestors are arrogant, you rejected God, and it is your fault that you went into exile. It's your fault that today I will not do a miracle here in your presence. Because you are arrogant sinners who don't think you need my help. Even though I told you I'm the Messiah. And I can do so much more than just heal your physical ailments. I can take out the guilt and, the, and all those temptations and evil that's inside your heart. I can heal that. At the deepest level of who you are, I can heal that but you're afraid to let me because you don't even want to admit that you have a problem. So my question today is for you, are you ready for Jesus to perform open heart surgery on you today? Are you ready to admit that you are a terrible, sin-sick sinner. You don't just need a band-aid. You don't just need someone to pick you up. You don't want to just come here and sit so you feel better for the rest of the week. But you want the master physician, the Messiah, to perform open heart surgery on you. Is that going to hurt? Does it hurt when God proclaims the law to you and says that you are a sin sick sinner, that says that you are terrible, that all your thoughts are evil, that you can't save yourself, that you will go to hell without Him? It hurts me. It hurts me to hear that even my best intentions are evil. Just as Paul says, the good I want to do, I don't do. The evil I don't want to do this, I keep on doing. God, help me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death, Paul says in Romans 7. That's hard to admit. 
especially when you feel down on yourself, when you're hurting, you just want to feel good, and especially in this culture that's all about just make yourself feel good. Everything's fine. You can do whatever you want. And sure, that might make you feel good for a little while, but it doesn't heal you. It doesn't get to your heart. It's like putting makeup on. It's like making sure you get a new haircut and you get new glasses, which helps you on the outside, but it doesn't heal your heart. And so are we like the Nazarenes who can come, but when it gets too personal, when it gets too direct, when someone offends us, are we going to run away? Or are we going to listen to the one who said, today this is fulfilled in your hearing, this prophecy that I am the anointed one who will preach good news to the poor, who will heal the brokenhearted, who will free the captives, give sight to the blind, and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Do you trust the Lord? Yes, to, to open up your heart and to work on that, which will cause such pain. It'll take a long time to get over, but, but the one who with the master precision of God himself digs into your heart, finds all of that evil and the temptation that you struggle with, and he says, there, let me remove it. Let me heal you. This is what I have come to do. And the one who continues to show you his love, so much so that even when he's attempted to be thrown off a cliff, he just passes right through and he goes on and continues to do exactly what's needed to be done to heal you. Even if you reject him again and again and again, even if you try to push his hands away as he tries to heal you, he continues to gently be patient with you and do whatever he can to bring you closer to him. To fight the sin for you that you can't fight alone, that you can't face. See, what Jesus wants to give you, as the scripture describes, is a new heart. A clean conscience. A pure mind. See, what Jesus wants to do for you is to take your dying soul... And to make it a living soul that will live forever. Will that hurt today? Yeah. As you admit your sin and you, you realize just the depth of your own sinful nature, that, that hurts. However, the physician of souls who went through more pain than you can imagine says, you will be with me on the other side of that. Not only for eternity, but today as you confess your sins, I will heal you with my forgiveness. I will give you hope. I will give you the power to stand and I will be with you every step of the way through this healing process, through your treatment. I know the diagnosis is scary, but this treatment that I provide to you through my suffering and death, through my rejection, through everything I have done for you, there is this guarantee. You will be with me in paradise. You will have a new spirit and a new heart through my spirit. I will help you get through these hard days. I will help you walk with me so that you can stand proud with a smile on your face knowing that the sin, sick soul that you were born with has been removed. And you have full free forgiveness through me. That's comforting. I know a lot of us don't like doctors. I hate doctors. I don't, I don't, don't enjoy going to the doctor. I don't enjoy like chasing our tails. You try to figure out what's causing what and then you take medication and then you're wondering what's caused by the medication that is trying to figure out the problem with your sickness. So I understand that urge to not admit you're sick because it's just frustrating and our bodies are dying. And so it's just frustrating in general to be in this world because things don't quite work the way they're supposed to. But Jesus isn't one of those doctors. He is the Messiah. He is God himself who has shown you the depth and the, and the length he will go to heal you, to do whatever he can to love you and to help you, not just in the future, but in this life, to help you face your temptations, to deal with them as they come up, to attack them with you, and then when you fail, to pick you up again and to heal you again and again and again. 
until one day he finally does get rid of your dead body, your, your, the parts that are falling apart, and gives you a new body with your new heart, and you will dwell in a new kingdom, in a new heaven forever and ever with him. That is awesome. So again, if you're wondering where God is, he's healing you. Let him. Let go of your arrogance. It's not worth it. Let go of your pride. Trust him. He will heal you. And that's hard for us. So let us pray to the Lord to ask him for help as we seek to allow him to perform that open surgery and to make us eternal beings who will dwell with him forever. Let us pray. Dear Savior, thank you for coming into the world to heal me even though I claw and fight you when you try to do so. Help me put to death my arrogance. Cut it out of me. Don't let me hide any part of my sin. Then give me a new heart that lives for you. Keep it pumping peace, comfort, and joy into my heart, into my mind, into my life as your forgiveness and love permeate everything about me. Finally, thank you, Lord, for your patience and care. As the psalmist said, do not abandon me to the grave, nor let me see decay. In you I know I have eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.